Hello, this is Cheyenne Marling and wanted to discuss developing a career path strategy. You know, we all spend so much time at our job planning the program, elevating the maturity of the program, and our individual careers are really overlooked. Um, if you don't take the time to invest in yourself, take the time to write down your career strategy, what you want to do with your career, before you know it, it's, you know, it's already three, five, ten years have gone by. So it's really crucial to, to really pay attention and invest in yourself and understand where you are today and where you want to go with your career. So first of all, you know, obviously companies want individuals who are going to work well together, com individuals who are going to strive for success, who are loyal, who are strategic, who think outside of the box, who are intellectually curious. But that's all great, but you also need to understand what you want. So uh, as you look at your career, you spend so much time at your job. And if you're not happy with your job, that's going to trickle into your home life. So you really want to assess, okay, what makes sense for your professional life, your personal life, and having the balance between the two? Because as you move up with your, within your career, um, and you become the head of or an SVP or the global business continuity professional, you're likely in that role to take calls from India, from Asia, from um, Europe at all times of the day. So thinking first and foremost, before you even set ground in your career strategy, what makes sense for you? What makes you happy? Because not everyone's going to want to lead a program. Not everyone's going to want to um, be taking those calls around the clock or, or being on call. So really understanding that first before you set forth is, is so very important. So looking at your career, you know, first of all, you want to also understand the market because, and our compensation report is incredible at doing this. And a lot of people, when they look at the comp report, they, they look at just the compensations, but not, they, they fail to look at the percentage of respondents who have the certifications, the percentage of respondents who have certain discipline expertise or have been giving presentations or publishing um, or who have a degree or what have you. So understanding what the market bears is really important to understand how your skill sets compare to the pool of candidates out there and how marketable you are. And understanding that marketability that you have or maybe lack of can help you in, in improving and, and taking advantage of some of the things that you have to propel your career forward. And always be opportunistic. Um, you know, just because you're career planning, that doesn't mean you have to leave your current job or leave your current employer to move forward in your career. So a lot of individuals seem to overlook that, that sometimes if you really enjoy your current company, you enjoy the program, you enjoy your coworkers, that looking for an opportunity within your current company could be the best fit overall for not only the present time, but also in the future. So if there's something that you could be doing more within your current company, perhaps getting more involved on the global uh, resiliency plan, or perhaps um, getting more involved if cyber is a part of your uh, program, getting more involved in resiliency, cyber planning, or third party risk management, or crisis communications. And, and to be quite frank, you know, many managers aren't necessarily thinking about their subordinates' careers. They're thinking about their own career and, and what they want to do. So expressing the interest that you want to do more can, can lead to more as well. And obviously, once you set your goal and what you want to do and, and who you want to be with your career, make sure that you document it, that you write it down, because you can't expect anything to happen unless you write it down and, and really document the steps you need to take to achieve your career goals. So as far as achieving it, again, think about the tangible skills that are in demand. And again, our compensation study is incredible at, at, at deciphering this on um, what companies are looking to pay for as far as present uh, leadership skills, giving presentations, publishing, serving on a board, um, you know, looking at um, global planning. Have you activated a program because of an event? Have you built a program from scratch? So think about some of those tangible skills that companies are really looking for. Um, a great exercise to do on not only your program and your team, but also yourself is a SWOT. So strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Sometimes a strength can be a weakness. 
sometimes an opportunity can be a threat. But it's kind of a great exercise to go through and, and understand where you are and some of the things that you can really improve upon as far as skills and competencies to propel your career forward. And use that squat to under, like, as I said, to understand, really understand and evaluate your skills, where you are today. Perhaps you haven't been giving um, presentations. You could um, enroll in Toastmasters, for example, to help um, become a better presenter. And, and quite frankly, it's also kind of challenging yourself and stepping out of your comfort zone that, that once you understand perhaps where you need to work or, or, um, or um, go ahead and, and move forward in your career, that presents the opportunity to, to, again, step out of your comfort zone and focus on those competencies that you can improve upon. Um, develop a road, a career roadmap. As I mentioned, if you don't document what you want to do, where you want to be three years, five years from now, I can guarantee you it's not going to happen. So physically, as a hom hom homework assignment, document where you want to be three years, five years from now, and always assess your goals. Go back and look, uh, do a, a BIA, a gap analysis on yourself, where you are, where you want to be, are you meeting your expectations, are you on the roadmap, have you diverged, have things changed for whatever reason, always assessing where you are now and where you want to be and if it still makes sense. And I cannot overemphasize how important this is, but understand when it's appropriate to seek a new employer. Don't just jump to jump. Don't assume the grass is greener on the other side. If you really do love your current company, you love your job, you love your coworkers, um, don't just jump just to get more money or think because someone else is, is earning more than you that if you left that you'd make more money too. Um, money doesn't, doesn't uh, necessarily mean happiness. It, it's not equivalent. So uh, you know, moving to a new job can create more stress on the home life and, and not understanding where you fit in with an organization. So really understanding when it's appropriate to jump is, is so crucial as you move forward in, in, um, in your career. Now, being a top talent through the process. So I can't even stress this enough. When you're career planning, it's so important to think about how you project yourself among the industry. We're in a very small niche profession where we have the opportunity to be very well networked, not only at the conferences, but within the associations and the certifying bodies. So think about how you could be more strategic and evolve with the profession. We are so much further as a profession from 20 years ago when it was really disaster recovery and data. Now we're thinking about um, crisis management and certainly pandemic planning and cybersecurity and third party risk management. So continue to evolve with the industry. Uh, make sure that you're contributing to the profession. Are you giving presentations? Are you writing white papers? Are you contributing within your program? So how are you portrayed? Are you a champion? And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be quote unquote in a leadership position. You can be a leader from within and you can motivate others without being in a leadership position and really contribute to the prof profession without being a leader within a certain company or program. And challenge yourself, step out of your comfort zone. I can guarantee you that I've been giving presentations for over 15 years and it's not something I enjoy. I, I, I do not enjoy whatsoever, but I do it. And once I'm done with it, I appreciate it. And I love the dialogue afterwards. So always be sure to challenge yourself, step out of your comfort zone, because I can guarantee you, you will learn in doing that. And be genuine with who you are in the process. You can fake it. Um, it is, you know, you are who you are and bottom line, you have to enjoy it and have fun with it. So I hope that you all got some great little golden nuggets in this um, little mini presentation. Feel free to reach out to us anytime, go to our website, reach out to our associates, um, download some of our complimentary reports, uh, view our current jobs and, and sign up for our career alerts and just know that we're always here for you. Thanks so much. Bye.